Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number six. Here are the problems. If a equals 2, b equals 5, c equals 4, x equals 1, y equals 3, and z equals 0, what are the values of the following expressions? Let's do them one by one. Number 1, 3x squared. 3x squared. x is 1. Oh, x is just 1. x is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is just 3. a times b. a times b. 2 times 5 over 10. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 and 10 divided by 10 is 1 again. 4 times a, 4 times a over 2. But before we do any work at all, before we waste any time with us at all, is 4 times 2, if we divide top and bottom by 2, is just 2a. This is just a very annoying way of writing 2a. 2 times a, uh, a is 2. So 2 times 2, which is 4. So this thing equals 4. Let's move on then. Number 4. A times B times C over 4. And number 5. C times Y over 2. A times B times C. A which is 2. Times B which is 5. Times C which is 4 over 4. If you were to divide top and bottom by 4, this 4 drops out. And you understand what I mean by divide top and bottom by 4. For example, for example, 400 divided by 20, well, how much is 400 divided by 20? Well, the very first thing we can see is that this thing ends in a 0 and this thing ends in a 0. So why don't we divide top and bottom by 10 first? Divide the top by 10 and divide the bottom by 10. And as long as we divide the top and the bottom by the same number, it's perfectly legitimate. So 400 divided by 10 is just 40. And 20 divided by 10 is just 2. But instead of showing all this childish work, instead of showing all this childish work, how else can we show them? How else can we express the idea of dividing top and bottom by 10? You see, we divided the top by 10 and we divided the bottom by 10. And at the end, we got 40 over 2. How could we have shown the same work without showing all the childish work like this? Knock out the zeros. That's it. When you knock out the zero from something, if I have 30 and if I knock out the zero, I'm dividing 30 by 10. 30 divided by 10 is 3. So if I have 30 and if I knock out the zero, I just, I just divided the quantity by 10. So if you divide top and bottom by 10, it becomes 40 over 2. And then this is 40 and this is 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If I divide the top by 2, it becomes 20. If I divide bottom by 2, it just becomes 1. But 1, you don't actually have to show it. It's understood to be 1. You don't actually have to write it out. So it's just 20. 400 divided by 20 is 20. Which is just as well because 400 divided by 20 should be 20. Because 20 times 20 is 400. So here we divide top and bottom by 4, it's just 2 times ten, two times 5, which is 10. Let's move on to number, let's move on to number 5. C times Y over 2. C, which is 4, times Y, which is 3, over 2. So it's 4 times 3 over 2. Let's divide the top and the bottom by 2. Let's divide the top and the bottom by 2. So on the top we have 4 over 3, on the bottom we have 2. Let's divide the top and the bottom by 2. So I'm going to divide the top by 2 and I'm going to divide the bottom by 2. And since I'm treating the top and the bottom in the same manner, I'm not changing the value of the expression. I'm not changing the quantity. Quantity is still the same because I did the same thing to the top and the bottom. So if you divide 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2, I'm going to get 6. Which is another way of showing is that this 2 cancel out with this 4 becomes 2, 2 times 3 is 6. 
and this two cancels out with that two, and it'll be just one. We don't have to show one because everybody understands it's just one. How could we have shown? How could we have shown all of this work without showing all the childish step like this? The grown-up method. Back out the two, and four becomes two. We divided. We divided four by two, and it became two. If you divide four by two, four divided by two is two. And if you divide two by two, it becomes one. It's one, but you don't have to write it. Why don't you have to write it? Because now the whole quantity is just two times three, which is six. Whether I write six or whether I write six over one, it doesn't matter. It's still six. So the whole thing is six. Two times three, which is just six. Let's go to number six. B times X. B, sorry, B times C over X. B, how much is B? Five times C, which is four, over X, which is one. As you can see, five times four is twenty. Twenty over one, twenty divided by one. Any number, any number divided by one is the number itself. So it's just twenty. Any number divided by one is the number itself. Similarly, any number multiplied by one is the number itself. Seven times one is seven. Thirteen times one is thirteen. I was about to say seven. But thirteen times one is not seven. Number seven. Question number seven. Now they're getting a little tricky. A squared times B squared over 2 times X over C. Do not, I repeat, do not reach for the bloody calculator. Leave the damn thing alone, as I said before. Leave it alone. Save the batteries for the rainy day. We don't need it. That's the whole point. If you're going to pull out your calculator and start doing it out, then there's no point in doing these exercises. The idea is to make you conversant. Oh, boy. Conversant. Where do I put it? The idea is to make you conversant at manipulating algebraic expressions. Now, let's see. What does conversant mean? Conversant does not mean what you're thinking here in terms of conversation. The word conversant in the context that I used, conversant, so that, to, so that you become conversant, Let's see, when did I cover it? I know I did. This is annoying because there are so many words starting with C. Conversion, it was day number three, what do you know? Just type in, just type in Kishwani prep dash vocab dash day three and you will learn what conversion. To be conversant at something means to be good at something, to be skilled at something. And that's how I use the word in the context. The idea is for you to become conversant at manipulating algebraic equation and not your bloody calculator. Leave the calculator alone. A squared, which is 2 squared, times B squared, which is 5 squared. And if, in, in case all of a sudden you're wondering why this guy puts a multiplication sign here and there is no multiplication sign here, if you're asking yourself that question, which is not a very good sign, it is not a good sign if you're asking yourself why does he put a multiplication sign even though there is nothing here. If you're, if you're one of those people who are asking yourself that question, which means that you are here watching the, the videos on day number six without having to bother, or without having to, having to, without having, I can't finish my sentence, without having watched, without having watched my video on day number one through five. As I, explained, as I explained in the first couple of days, you must watch in sequence from day one and so on and so forth without skipping anything if you happen to be one of those people who is just starting out in algebra. If you are the person who has never taken the algebra before in your life and you want to learn the algebra from scratch, which is the whole point of these videos, that was the idea behind it, it is for you. If you happen to be one of those persons, then uh, do not watch these videos uh, haphazardly all over the place. Go in sequence. Do you understand? Conversion, conversion was the word. And in the first two days, I explained these ideas. 
as to why it's okay to put a multiplication sign here, why is it okay to put a parenthesis here if I wanted to. It's perfectly fine to put a parenthesis there. It doesn't change anything. 2 times x, which is 1, times c, which is 4. So we have 2 times 2 squared, which is 2 times 2. We have 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, over 2 times 1 times 4. Well, I see 2 times 2, which is 4, and here is a 4. So basically it's 25 over 2. 25 over 2. That's, that's the answer. 25 over 2. Very strange answer. What number was this? Number 7. Yep, it is 25 over 2. Let's move on to number 8. Let's say you can leave it at that. 25 over 2. It's fine. It's perfectly acceptable. You don't have to do anything more with it. If somebody insists that you give them the, uh, in the decimal, then you said 12 and a half. But if you leave it 25 over 2, it's perfectly okay. Number 8. A times B times C over X plus Y squared. A which is 2 times B which is 5 times C which is 4 over X plus Y. X which is 1, Y which is 3. 1 plus 3 squared. Which can be written as 1 plus 3 squared, 1 plus 3 which is 4, 4 squared, which can, 4 squared can be written as 4 times 4. And now if you were to divide the top and the bottom by 4, we can knock out this 4. If you divide the top and the bottom by 2, this 2 goes out and this 4 becomes 2. So it turns out that the answer is 5 halves, 5 over 2. Number 9. Number 9. Let's see, we are done with this one. I'm going to move on to the next one, number 9. x squared times y cubed over b plus c. x squared over y oh, x squared times y cubed over b plus c. Let's see what that gives us x squared, how much is x? Oh, that's just 1. 1 squared times y cubed, 3 cubed, over b plus c. b is 5, c is 4, which is 9. Now, this 1 squared, I did actually, actually bother to write 1 squared here, because x is 1, but I didn't have to. It doesn't serve any purpose. Because showing, some num showing any quantity times 1, so it serves no purpose. If you have 2,337, 2,337 times 1 is still 2,337. It doesn't change anything. So I didn't have to actually show it if I if we didn't want to. Basically what we have is 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, over 4 plus 5, which is 9. And this 9 will cancel out, knock out these two 3. So the answer is 3. Take this 9 took care of those two trees because 3 times 3 is 9. So if you divide the top and the bottom by 9, you can knock out those two trees from the top and this 9 from the bottom. Finally, the last problem, which is number 10. Number 10 is fairly complicated. I'm going to actually give you a chance, a couple of seconds, to actually do it out yourself before I do it. Because it's, as I said, fairly complicated. A squared times b cubed times c raised to 4 times x raised to 6 y squared times z raised to 4 I want you to do it out, pause the video at this point pause the video, do it out and once you're done with it then you can resume the video, okay? But make sure you do it yourself as I said my first day of the lecture in the introduction <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break into sermon one more time it is imperative, it is important, it is vital that you watch these videos in sequence. The very first video I made was the introduction, day zero if you will. In that video I explained that and I forget what it is that I was talking about, so never mind. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, I, in, the, in those videos I explained the importance of solving all these problems yourself first before you continue watching the videos. Do not just sit there and watch the videos. You must solve every single problem yourself first. Go ahead and do it.
Okay, here we go then. What we notice is that we got uh, a squared times b cubed times c to the 4 times x to 6 and y squared. Seems like a very large quantity. Before I invest all that time into it, let's just see if there are any zeros somewhere. Any zeros? Oh, there you go. z equals zeros. And there is my z. So here we have zeros raised to 4. 0 raised to 4 is just 0 times 0 times 0 times 0. It doesn't matter how many times you multiply 0 by itself, it's still a big fat 0. So this quantity, this whole quantity, z raised to 4, is just 0. z raised to 4 is 0. And 0 times any number, any number times 0 is just a 0. So the whole thing is just 0. You don't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. Do you understand? I was about to say, you don't have to do any of this starting with a C and ending with a P, but I stop myself. You don't have to do any of this starting with a C and ending with a P. Any number times 0 is 0. Okay, so no need to do this mumbo jumbo. I will see you tomorrow on day number 7. Alright? In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there if there is any way, if there is anything that I can help you with. Alright? Thank you.